in this question in this um, in this video we continue from the previous one this time we're going to look at how we compute orders of convergence so here just a quick run through basically a couple of things for you to recall ek plus one is mu times ek to the par p so what we saw last time this is the fundamental relationship between the successive errors which gives us the order of convergence p and this is the asymptotic constant uh, mu now we are assuming uh, as we've assumed before if x is equal to r is the exact solution of the problem fx equals zero then clearly f of r must be zero since r is the r satisfies f of x equals zero and of course the 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 fixed point problem uh, is gr equals r furthermore the definition by definition ek the error at the kth step or kth iteration is x of k xk minus r now to continue what we need to do is let's let's start with the fact that xk plus 1 equal equals gxk is any iterative process so this can easily be written as g of ek plus r and you can see that from here this definition now if we do the taylor series expansion uh, x k plus 1 equals g of r plus g dash at r into e k plus g double dash e k squared plus and so on so that would be our taylor series expansion uh, and of course we can curtail it at um, e k squared if we wish and um, at some kasai or at some point r which happens to be between uh, uh, xk and r in fact so but anyway let's uh, let's uh, let's see this is the taylor series expansion what what else can we get out of this if we now if you notice here remember that the uh, fixed point problem here gr equals r uh, we can rewrite this as xk plus 1 minus gr uh, which is r so that's equal to g prime r e k plus g double prime r over 2 factorial e k squared plus dot 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 and this if you notice this is uh, in fact e k plus 1 there at k plus 1 um, so e k plus 1 then turns out to be equal to g prime r e k plus g double prime r over 2 factorial e k squared plus and so on so this um, now at this point we need to um, get some more idea about which particular uh, iterative process we're looking at we need to get specific so now we start looking at some uh, examples uh, of the particular iterative processes we, we have studied so far now if we start with the fixed point iteration as you know, fixed point iteration, one of the key requirements of convergence we've no looked at is that this g dash of x must be less than 1. And if it is less than 1 on the interval where we are searching for the root, um, then we know that the fixed point iteration method will converge. Now that would indicate that our g dash um, uh, is not necessarily 0. So uh, this would indicate that this was in, uh, that in, 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 this would indicate that the fixed point iteration, um, since we have a non-zero first derivative, um, therefore the iterative process would end up being, in fact, something like this, and that's going to be equal to, in fact, um, some uh, uh, say some kasai, and. Uh, and that is times e k. Now, this would be, and this is how we actually derive this result. If you remember, now in this case, uh, that's how this just g dash. That's the relationship here. That's why this has to be less than one for this to converge. In fact, now that would indicate if you look at the power of the e k, that's power one. So therefore, the order of convergence here is one 
So the order of convergence of fixed point iteration is one. It's linear. Uh, it's uh, order of convergence is linear. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So in Newton's method, uh, in Newton's method, our gx iterative process, in fact, is x minus fx divided by f prime of x. This implies that the derivative g dash x turns out to be, in fact, 1 minus f prime squared uh, minus um, f double prime times f divided by f dash f x all squared. Okay, so now uh, you can simplify that and that simply becomes this and this divide each other and 1 minus 1 is 0 so you're left with just f double prime at x f x over f prime of x squared. So now if at x equals r let's see what's going on because uh, remember our objective is to see here in this Taylor series expansion about the error what is g dash at r going to be? So let's have a look at that. This implies that g dash at r is equal to f double prime at r, f at r, divided by f dash at r. Now this is all good provided, of course, that the second derivative f double dash exists and f dash of r should not be zero. So here, clearly f dash of r cannot be zero, otherwise g dash, we have a problem with this. But notice one thing very interesting. What is the value of fr here? Well, fr is 0, isn't it? Because r is a solution. So therefore, this means that g dash r becomes 0. Now, if it becomes 0, this means that in our expression uh, that the error ek plus 1, in fact, now is simply the double derivative g double double dash r over 2 factorial ek squared, okay? And what we're saying is now if we take this and therefore this and therefore this, the order of convergence is 2. So, is 2, of course. And of course here, even if we take, you know, we're assuming here g double prime at some value between the root and um, the, uh, uh, you know, close to the root divided by 2 factorial will most likely be some value be uh, less than 1, we're hoping. Uh, but as I told you, it's not necessary because this is now, we have quadratic convergence in this case. But anyhow, this is how we actually calculate the orders of convergence. So basically, uh, if we go back here, what's happening is, if you look at this, what's happening is this uh, uh, Taylor series expansion of the um, of the k at uh, k plus one th er iterate error, the k plus one th iteration, basically is uh, here shows that as soon as you have a non-zero term, the first non-zero term that you get here, you ignore the rest. So if if for instance the um, g prime is zero. If g prime is less uh, some value, non-zero value, or possibly a non-zero value, then we say it's order one convergence. If g prime is zero, like in the case of Newton's method, here you saw g prime. Um, where it is? Yeah, here g prime was zero. Then in that case, this goes away, and we go to the next term. And uh, it is you can easily show that in fact the second derivative of this is not going to be zero, provided f dash. Uh, uh, the, the second and third derivative in fact exist and so on uh, and f dash is not ident is not zero so then the, you, you are left with this term of course and this basically tells us the uh, uh, yeah, and of course we cut off we, we don't go any further we, we, we don't go any further we just stop at this point uh, hopefully that demonstrates how we can calculate the orders of convergence of these methods all right thank you